Welcome back everybody. This week we're going to talk about how to get a good finish on walnut using water base. Let's get to it. The products right here are the two products that I would recommend. Not necessarily the Valspar. They've been bought out by another company. Alexia I think is how they pronounce it. Or Exalta or something like that. Um, but they're about the same in terms of solids. This one has a little bit higher solids. This one's like at 16 and this one's like at 15. But you're gonna wanna do, um, I found that on a, on a walnut, I'll do two coats, all right? And I do it full strength on the shellac and I do it full strength on this. If it was a maple, you can get away with one coat. But the name of the game is building solids. All right, and that's what you want to do in building a good surface so that basically when you put your water base on here, it can't raise that grain because that's the issue with the water base is the grain raising problem. All right, so let's um, now both of these are solvent based products. So you use your judgment on that and um, you can decide what you want to do there. But my personal preference is I'd use a silco. that that dry why would you use um, this on a walnut well the main reason why guys want to do it is they want to get that solvent pop some some guys call it that some guys call it grain strike um, and other guys call it ambering or warming the wood okay now if I was going straight water base I actually would probably use a different product than the Kim aqua if I was not gonna be shooting the vinyl sealer, okay? And the reason for that is that the Kim Aqua is a pretty clear, it doesn't really yellow the wood very much. Um, it has like maybe a slight bit, but it's pretty much a clear product. So now you could also, if you don't wanna do uh, this, again, you could put a coat of oil on it and let it dry 24 hours and then come back and shoot your water base over the top of it. That's what I, I used to do for a while, but when you're in a production environment or you're in an environment where you've got to get stuff out the door, you, you start rethinking how you're going to go about this. So we're going to let it dry and we'll come back and look at it. We're, we're dry. It's been about 15 minutes and um, it actually feels pretty good already. I'm going to use a scuff pad because um, I'm trying to simulate what you guys would be up against now. If you can't find a scuff pad, you can go down to the auto body store and get you some um, 600 or 800 uh, wet dry sandpaper and you can use that and that'll work too just to scuff it down, all right? Now, <clears throat> so we're just gonna scuff it down and how do you know it is dry? Well, basically when you're getting like a powder, say I'm getting a powder on my hand, then you know you're good, all right? And that's with any finish. Now we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna go across, cross hatch it and then come across this way. Um, and again, the reason I do that is it gives me a better build. If I was just to go across it one time, I'm not getting as good of a build as I would if I'm doing it double, all right? So let's, let's go ahead and give that a shot. it again and as you can see now it's got a lot better build on those pores those pores aren't um, you can't see those pores sticking up as well let me see if I can pull the camera so when we go to put our top coats on it's gonna go on like glass and that is the secret with water base is you have to get it sealed really well so that it doesn't keep pulling that grain fiber up okay so now that we got our second coat we're waiting on that to dry um, I'm going to take the Kim Aqua here, and if you don't have one of these PPS systems, I highly recommend it. Um, it, it takes out a lot of the guesswork and issues. You're not going to worry about having trash in your system because it has an extra filter in it. Let's go ahead and scuff this now that it's uh, dry, and it actually feels like butter already. Um, but we're going to scuff this up. Now, 
On my first coat, I don't worry about on, but on my second coat, a lot of times I'll take either a damp microfiber cloth or I'll take a tack cloth and actually wipe it off. Um, I like the tack cloth personally because sometimes I've had the microfiber cloths um, leave some stray um, residue on, but you could use either one. Um, if you're using a solvent based finish, the micro, uh, both of those are really kind of a waste of time. You, you just don't really need it. Okay. So we got our gun set up with the uh, Kim Aqua in it. And Let's see if I can get a shot here. So you can see it looks pretty orange peely. And a lot of guys give me a lot of crap, have given me crap about that, but that's the way water base looks when it shoots out. Matter of fact, a lot of solvent base shoots like that. But I will come back here in an hour and this will be dead flat and look great. Just to get an idea of what you're looking for out of the gun on this, okay? So here's the final on the the walnut now as you can see you can still see the grain and you can feel that grain now it's super smooth you know it's like silk but you, it's still going to be grainy walnut is is just that way the only way to get around that would be one either use something with higher solid content um, getting into more of a conversion varnish or um, you could grain fill it or the other option would be at this point now that I've got four coats on it to come back with like a 220 or 180 and cut this back down flat and then pile on some more finish. Um, you know, it, it's up to it's up to you to decide, but this is pretty, pretty, pretty good. All right. Now, I also did one with the shellac and I had really good results with it. So you can do it that way. But that's how I would finish walnut. That's how I finish walnut. Um, I hope you guys got something out of it. And we'll see you next time. Make sure you like, subscribe, and catch you next time.